Hello, everyone. Today, we're pleased to present to you Google's framework to build optimal compute platforms designed to support the business. Beyond that, we will discuss how to leverage Google Cloud Platform tooling to optimize for reliability, innovation, and cost efficiency with GKE. My name is Kent Hua, and I'm a solutions manager focused on GKE and modernization solutions. And with me, we have Fernando Hubo, a solutions architect specialized in Kubernetes and GKE optimization. So to start, we would like to highlight that Google's business-oriented compute optimization framework has three main pillars. And I will start with discussing the first with the question, who knows what service level indicators and service level objectives are? How many of you knew that 10 years ago? Well, it turns out about 10 years ago, everybody had metrics and practices to assess the health of applications and production environments. But at that time, the community, companies, and teams were facing a big challenge. There was no consensus about metrics, practices, and even technical language across organizations. That was when Google's SRE team created a framework with a common taxonomy and published it broadly. For example, the, with the books we see here. The first in book introduces the topic of SRE. The second, practical examples for implementing SRE. And lastly, best practices and additional insights around SRE. Now companies use SRE's taxonomy to discuss concepts of reliability and responsiveness. These were learnings that resulted from many years of working on modern, large and reliable systems. Today, you can assess how reliable your environment is with only four golden signals. And as such signals are available in Google Cloud Platform, for example, in Anthos Service Mesh and cloud monitoring. By adopting Anthos Service Mesh, Google's Mesh platform based on Istio, you get out of the box the SRA signals to assess how your services are performing. For example, you can assess how much load your services can handle with requests per second. You can assess if your users are having a bad experience because of failures with error rate, or whether your users are having difficulties due to applications not being able to respond in a timely manner with latency. For that, you just need to set service level objectives or SLO to ensure your workloads meet your business requirements and alerts to realize when error budgets are running out before it becomes a problem. All of this without having to make any changes to your application running on GKE. Anthos Service Mesh provides a platform to operate in a common language of SLI and SLO, paving the way for reliable and performance systems. The second pillar in our business-oriented framework is about innovation. And the question we have to you is, can you innovate fast enough for the competitive nature of today and tomorrow? Well, this is a tricky question because to answer it, you need to understand where your organization stands along with the rest of the industry. With Dora, known as DevOps Research and Assessment, which is part of Google, you can measure your team's software delivery performance, compare the results with others, and discover which DevOps capabilities you should focus on to improve. Since 2014, Dora's team has been publishing the state of DevOps research annually. This program represents seven years of research and data from over 32,000 professionals worldwide. It runs academically rigorous research for DevOps, providing an independent view into practices and capabilities that drive high performance in software delivery and ultimately organizational outcomes. In addition to business outcome highlighted in the research, Thor also published a white paper about the ROI of DevOps transformation. Beyond cost savings, it discussed how DevOps, if done right, can be a value driver and innovation engine driving business growth by first, improved efficiency through the reduction of unnecessary rework, the potential revenue gained by reinvesting the time saved in new offering capabilities, and improved user experience by reducing outages and downtime. Because of this state of DevOps research, today you can assess with only four key metrics your company's software delivery performance. Through Cloud Deploy, Google's fully managed continuous delivery platform that has one of its missions making it easier to establish and operate software delivery to GKE. You can follow some of Dora's metrics in your delivery pipelines. For example, deployment frequency. This measures how often an organization successfully deploys resources to production. And just for instance, based on Dora's performance reports, elite performers deliver to production multiple times per day. Another metric Cloud Deploy tracks is deployment failure rate, the percentage of deployments that have failed. 
This helps you measure the reliability of your pipeline and infrastructure while also providing a signal if more focus needs to be made to reduce failed rollouts. By delivering new capabilities quickly and in a reliable way, organizations are able to innovate faster and be more competitive, providing the best experience to their end users. Cloud Deploy provides you both automation and monitoring capabilities for your delivery front pipelines to GKE. I will now hand it off to Fernando to discuss our last but not least important pillar, cost optimization. Thanks, Ken. As Ken mentioned, our third pillar is about cost optimization. And I would like to ask you, how many of you are concerned about cost efficiency in the public cloud? How many of you are doing cost optimization in the public cloud? Or at least thinking about it or being pressured to do so? What metrics should you care about? Where should you start with? These are some of the questions that we have heard a lot recently. And they resemble past challenges where both infrastructure and platform teams were struggling to assess the reliability of their systems. This only reinforces that cost optimization in the public cloud requires a standard taxonomy. The lack of such a taxonomy drives both cultural and tooling challenges for individuals and organizations. Google has been working on this problem for a few years now, with the goal of creating an independent framework for cost optimization in the public cloud. And of course, to help Google Cloud customers to easily navigate their challenges. And today, we are pleased to bring to you some of the key Kubernetes insights that came out of this effort. Learning from a wide variety of customers and by running a large-scale quantitative research internally, we figure out the most important Kubernetes cost optimization metrics, which are now referring as the golden signals for Kubernetes cost optimization. It's important to highlight that although the research was run inside of Google, these signals can be applied to any Kubernetes platform running on any public cloud. It's also important to say that we have tested this framework with more than 100 customers, and we are currently working on refining our research and its key insights so that we can publish it publicly to all of you. Similar to SRE and Dora, now the industry can assess how they are doing on Kubernetes cost optimization. The golden signals for Kubernetes cost optimization are broken into two groups, resources and discounts. The first resource-related signal is workload resizing, which assess developers' ability to set the right CPU and memory for their workloads. The second signal is demand-based downscaling. This signal requires a shared responsibility to ensure clusters can scale down at off peak. For example, developers are responsible for making their workloads outscale according to the demand, while platform admins are responsible for configuring the cluster outscaler to follow the workload dynamicity. The third signal is cluster beam packing. The signal assess the ability of the team to place the right pods in the right nodes so that applications can use all the CPU and memory available in the cluster. It's important to highlight that to achieve a good cluster beam packing, Developers and platform admins should also work together. Developers need to configure their workloads to be scheduled in certain set of nodes, which are usually defined by and provisioned by platform admins. Last but not least, discounts. Most of the public cloud providers offer spot VMs and continuous using discount options. The discount coverage signal measure the percentage of either resources like CPU and memory or workloads like pods that are covered by such discounts. The same way it happened with other products discussed in this session, GKE is building out of the box how the learnings from more than two years Google is working on Kubernetes cost optimization. GKE has already implemented a set of cost insight features, and those features provide you better visibility into GKE clusters and workloads. This visibility allows you to predict the cost of your clusters even before creating them, quickly identify optimization opportunities, and attribute costs to application owners, opening the doors to implement showback and chargeback practices. Moreover, with the current action mode workload recommendations, developers can right-size their workloads with just what they need without compromising the reliability of the application. Finally, GKE Cost Insights allow different parts of the organization 
to take an active role on cost optimization, which uh, with metrics and recommendations exposed both on GKUI and cloud monitoring, developers and operators can quickly understand the actual resource utilization, waste, and act on it, while FinOps and budget owners can observe the return of the investment of each team and make business conscious decisions. Today, you can understand how cost optimized your GKE workloads are right into the GCP console. Another way to cost optimize your workloads on GKE is by adopting your fully managed Kubernetes offering, GKE Autopilot. GKE Autopilot goes one step further than our standard offering by provisioning and maintaining all the worker nodes for you and by applying scaling and security features by default. However, it's important to remember it's still GKE, where every run on GKE Autopilot works the same on GKE standard. This makes Autopilot a smart and safe choice for most of you. When using GKE Autopilot, you get rid of the biggest source of waste and fork, that is, cluster bean packing. In other words, cluster bean packing is not your problem anymore. It's a now a Google's problem. Beyond that, you don't pay for the resource used by the system, like operational system, kubelet, system pods. With GKE Autopilot, you will only pay per resource your applications request. For example, if your, if your application requests one CPU and a 64 CPU node was provisioned, you will only pay for one CPU. While on in GKE standard, you will be paying for what was provisioned, that is, the 64 CPU node. This makes your billing forecast much simpler once you don't need to consider cluster dynamicity and waste. Beyond that, Autopilot provides you many other benefits that improve your total cost of ownership, such as reduced operational toil. You don't even need to care about nodes anymore. Less required Kubernetes administration expertise. Autopilot configures all the best practices for you. And of course, it hardens your cluster security. Leaving all these boring but very important tasks to Google's experienced SRE. With Google with GKE Autopilot, you get lots of, uh, lots of time back to focus on what matters the most, your business. Just to make it a little bit more visual, these are the efforts required to manage Kubernetes over-provisioning in any public cloud. As you can see, it's not a trivial task. There is the cultural part, there are many things you need to look at, and it requires a shared responsibility, mainly between the developers and platform admins, which usually are very challenging in large enterprise. Now, see how the adoption of GKE Autopilots make your life simpler. As we discussed before, you get completely rid of cluster bean packing, and for demand-based downscaling, there is no shared responsibility anymore. Now, it's enough if developers manage to make their application scale up and down according to the demand. Finally, this is what happens if you also leverage GKE Cost Insight features. With Cost Insight, you can tackle both the cultural and price sizing problems by attributing costs to application owners and by giving teams visibility and actionable recommendations. To finalize, let's wrap up the three pillars of our business-oriented optimization framework. First, Google has written the books of SRE to provide a framework for designing and running reliable systems. And by adopting Anto Service Mesh, you can assess how reliable and performant your GK services are. Second, we are the authors of DORA, State of DevOps Research which leads to software delivery best practices. And by adopting Cloud Deploy, you can drive your way for innovation by delivering to GK faster and in a reliable manner. And third, we have run a large-scale quantitative research, which we intend to make it publicly available shortly, that figure the golden signals for Kubernetes cost optimization out. And you can now assess such signals either on GKUI or Cloud Monitoring. These three pillars together form the Google's framework to build optimal compute platforms designed to support the business, where you need to have reliable systems so that your users are happy with, with your services, 
you need to have an environment which allows you to innovate faster in the current competitive world. And you need to do all these things in a cost-efficient manner so that you don't hurt your business. Hope you found this useful. And if you want to learn more about our business-oriented optimization framework, or if you need any help to optimize your GK workload, please use the link you're seeing in this screen. Thanks for watching, and thank you, Ken, for joining me today. Have a great rest of next.